Don't look now, but you're listening to the Yellow Bag Brigade, the authorities on everything geek. And now, whether you like it or not, here are your hosts, Michael Nystrom and Johan Arwidmore. Hello, Johan. Hi, Michael. All right, so what's the today's topic, my friend? Today's topic is the PowerShell Deployment Toolkit, a very, very shiny community type solution feature extension to Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Yeah. So you did remember the first time you saw it, right? That was pretty cool. That was back in MMS 2016 when Michael Niehaus announced it during the conference and say, hey, this is what I've been spending a good few nights on, starting to develop a little bit of a framework to, um, to, with the purpose of introducing PowerShell instead of VB Script to drive all the, the processes around uh, MDT. Yes, and, and the fun thing is that um, a lot of people do believe that uh, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit is it's, it's MMC console and it's VB Script. Um, it's not really true. Um, I know that Niehaus told us, both you and me, that um, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit was one of the first uh, solutions that Microsoft built uh, using the MMC console, but everything behind it is actually PowerShell, except one thing, and that is the task sequence. Uh, the task sequence um, runs, uh, it, you know, it's using the standalone one, but it's using a VB script, and, and the reason was Windows XP. They needed something that could run in the operating system, uh, regardless of version of Windows, and so they, they needed to do VB script. But, however, um, Windows XP is not the primary OS anymore, <laughs> is it? No, no, not really. I don't. Do you have any machine running XP? Uh, the customers I work with doesn't. Uh, I've heard about it. <laughs> They're still being around, but for most yeah. part, Windows 10 is the. Uh, either they have it right now or they are planning on going that yeah. route this year. So Windows yeah. 10 it is, and that means we always have a decent version of PowerShell available to us, meaning PowerShell 5 or above um, in the box. And yeah. that allows for quite many new interesting scenarios. So, yeah, it, for example... It can, yeah, it kind of solves two problems. It actually solves another problem as well. And you will be able to continue in two seconds. It solves the problem with nobody knows VB script anymore. So many old farts like us are going to retire and yeah, I mean, so and that was one of the reasons that Niehaus did it, right? He said that um, the knowledge that people have around VB script will make MDT automatically disappear in the future because nobody knows how to write VB script or they, can, they can't troubleshoot it and stuff like that. And it's, it's true. I, I know you know VBScript um, very good. Um, I know it okay. Uh, but if I poke around and look in the community of people knowing how VBScript, I mean, just finding a blog post about VBScript means you're going to find something with... A few right, years on it. Over, yeah, it's going to look awful. It's like, really? Did we, did we do all this stuff before? Uh, so that was one of the reasons. But, and now we can continue. Uh, besides moving from VB script to PowerShell that makes it easier for people to understand, it also gives us fun things. So PowerShell allows us to quite easily not only use a regular file share as transportation, because as you know, PowerShell have native functions to tap into also web requests. So we can now pull down deployment share content through HTTP and HTTPS. We can compress content to make that process even better. And it basically means that we can do deployments over cloud solutions these days. Yeah, so, and, and that's one thing that is awesome. Another one is because we've been poking around in the code and I was like, how, how does it work? I mean, how does the solution access the deployment share. It's like, okay, so it's gonna you know, reach out. How does it do it over HTTP? It turns out that the solution, and it's slick. The solution is really cool. Um, there, there is a bunch of, of uh, modules, um, one of them being the task sequence module, and there are other modules as well, partial modules. One of them is the one we use in the workbench. 
So when you fire up the uh, workbench and you connect to it, you can you can browse through the content, you can select th things, you can add files, you can remove files. Now, if you take that function, that PowerShell module, which is basically a DLL file, you take that and you put it on the client, which means that you can mount the entire deployment share over any transportation, which means that on the client side, we now have access to the entire deployment share. Uh, we need another mechanism to download content, but we can access the content through a control channel. And that's awesome, which means you can go like, I need to find the application with the following name. Yep, yep, you can get that by just doing a, a select uh, object where uh, name or ID or whatever, and the same goes for uh, WIM files and everything. So it's awesome. Uh, the way it's done, I was like, Hey, can you really do that? And yeah, you can. So uh, it's it's really fun to work with, uh, to be honest. But it gives us the HTTP compression internet peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, and it gives us the ability to extend it even more. So yeah. let's say that you, you really want to create a, a, a better Windows update stuff. Okay, create a script, put it in. Um, so that's pretty cool or drivers or you know stuff like that so is there any limitations not really the the only thing with behind the solution is that it is indeed a framework yeah like the old mt was as well but we are switching the programming or script language into powershell versus vb script we are and we are also making some of the steps with you know if you look in the the old standard task sequence, there's a lot of steps. Um, we don't need to have them all anymore because we can solve it inside the, uh, the PowerShell script. Yeah, um, and also, uh, a lot of the existing code in, in good old MDT is a lot of Windows XP code still there. Yeah. And Microsoft were basically too afraid to remove it <laughs> because they didn't know what it would break removing the code. But yeah. now, since we're only testing on, on you know basically Windows 10 and above or Server 2016 and above, we do not have to worry about that at all. We don't have to worry about all that legacy crap that has been around for you know a long time. And one other thing that I didn't know this was the first time I saw this is when when Neha said, "Well, you installed Microsoft Deployment Toolkit <clears throat> straight up, right? And then you run this PowerShell code, and then you get new items." And I was like, "Okay, so you modify the existing installers. You you modify the you know you do more or less destroy." the deploy share. No, we don't. Um, we add everything new to a, to a new template folder. But that's empty. Yeah, but we add it to the template folder. And that turns out to be one of the solutions they built for a customer a long time ago. If a customer needs to have a modified version of MDT, instead of modifying it, you add files to a template folder and the workbench will automatically pick files from the template folder before it picks it from the native location, which means that you can run it as we do. It's, I call it side by side. So that's, that's, it's not really replacing anything. It's extending the existing MDT deployment share. It doesn't mean you can run everything at the same time because the boot media is only going to work for one kind of deployment but it means that you can take an existing MDT deployment share, you can add the extension, and you can have more or less all the files, all the content, and you can use it with modifications, but you don't need to rebuild your entire deployment solution. It's possible to take a copy of the one you have, extend the copy, modify the copy, and then you have a new deployment share that runs PowerShell instead of VB script, more or less, kind of, something like that. Um, so so how, how, how many hours have you spent on this, Michael, so far? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> yes, um, I want to know. Okay, you, you want to know. Um, I, th I think I did a rough calculation about 200 hours, maybe, something like that. Um, it's community-driven, which means that we don't really get paid for this, uh, which means that every evening at 8 until 2 a.m. in the morning for a very long time.
<laughs> Something like that. Uh, I, I'm pretty familiar with the code now. <laughs> And, and we added a few lines also uh, since since the beginning. We have oh, more yeah. than tripled the amount of code in the solution. Yeah. So, uh, logging cool is better. Stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of new stuff. And and we also take the opportunity of you know things that both you and me was like, darn, I wish they had this in MDT from the beginning, and they didn't. All of those, not all, but a, a, a fair amount of these things that we always wanted to have, is yeah. there. It's like, yes, it's building the deployment share exactly that, the way we want it, and it's adding all the features that we really want to have. Um, and I think it's going to be awesome when we have the, let's say, the, 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 first, um, the first release that can be used without you know, troubleshooting PowerShell code for, to insanity. Um, as soon as that is released, it's going to be released as a community-driven thing, I mean, it's going to end up in GitHub, and yep. that means that everyone that are really good at PowerShell and really like MDT will be able to say, hey, I did an update to this, and I will submit that, and as long as the code is okay, yeah, it's going to be accepted, and yeah, we're going to use it in the next version. So hopefully we'll, we'll have a lot of people um, adding features to it. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, it's not really ready to be released, but we are very, very close to have something that actually works um, uh, for, for deploying Windows. And uh, we, are, we didn't say this, but we're working on Windows 10 client deployments. We're working on server deployments. Um, we will support bare metal. We think bare metal needs to be there. Uh, we're talking about in-place upgrade. We're talking about refresh. Uh, replays, uh, database support, all that stuff uh, is going to end up in the uh, solution eventually. Not sure we're going to have everything ready by the first time, but yeah, it's going to end up. Now, the first scenario is obviously bare metal, just making sure that works. That's the key scenario because if that doesn't work, well, we kind of toast. So, yeah. Uh, and we will be able to do something really cool. And maybe the audience doesn't know that, but, but you, you live in the US, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm in Sweden, which yes. means we, we do have a distance between us. Uh, that's for sure. So the first real test we're going to do for internet deployment is, of course, if I can deploy a client on my network from your from Chicago, <laughs> yeah, from Chicago, and the opposite around, and we're going to be able to uh, see that it really works to do global deployment. And if we can do that. Um, adding peer-to-peer uh, -peer solutions, <laughs> then we can get some speed in this as well. So that's going to be awesome. Global world domination. I love oh, it. Oh, yes. It, can you just imagine this? Uh, you have a machine uh, and you go like, I, need to, I really need to upgrade this machine. Um, you're in the middle of absolutely nothing at all, but you do have internet connectivity. And you go like, yeah, I'm going to upgrade this machine with a task sequence running across the internet. That's going to be, oh, that's going to be so nice. Today. So nice. Yes. So the repository where all this is, is currently posted is github.com slash friends of MDT. Uh, you'll find a link here as well, of course. But I think that was pretty much it, Michael. I would say so. I would say that's all for now. And I would like you to join us for the next episode. And in the next episode, you will learn everything about the golden opportunity of doing nothing at all. Thank you for listening to the Yellow Bag Brigade, the authorities on everything geek. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And if you didn't, that's your problem. Until next time, embrace automation. <laughs>